Yes, hello, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Ergonomics and Facilities Planning for Hospitality. This is week five. Okay. So our focus, our discussion uh, for this week is more about electrical system. No, electrical system na ginagamit natin sa hospitality. Paano, paano sila nilalagay, paano sila ginagawa. Okay. At the same time, I will discuss here uh, how... Uh, excuse me. Uh, to teach you how to read your uh, electrical meter. Okay? Para may marunong din kayo. Okay, so let's start. Electric, electrical system. Electrical, electricity is the most costly and widely used energy source within the hospitality industry. High quality, reliable source of electrical energy is required for the operation of equipment ranging from lights to computers to kitchen equipment to air conditioning system with the electric bill accounting for as much as 90% of a property's energy cost. It is uh, clear that uh, controlling energy cost involves controlling electricity consumption, in particular, correct design, proper operation, and attention to maintenance of electric electrical system all contributes to safe and comfortable environment for both guests and employees. Okay. So, alam nyo dati, mga hotel operations, napakagastos nila pagdating sa electric bill. No? Pero nung uh, naimbento na yung mga LED bulb, no? mas na less yung, uh, mas na less yung cost ng kanilang electricity bills. Kasi, yung consumption, mas bumaba. Imagine nyo, okay? Yung mga bulb nun, pagkailangan ng malakas, 40 watts. Ngayon, sa 10 watts pa lang na LED. Diba? Malaki, para same na yung illumination nila, yung brightness nila. Yun yun. Okay? So, mas nakakatipid na ang mga buildings, hospitality, industry, no? lahat ng department dahil sa inventong LED. At the same time, gumagawa din sila ng way para mas makalas sila ng electrical consumption. Okay? Uh, introduction to electrical system. An illustrated in Exhibit 1, electrical system consists of source, distribution system, and control device connected to the various piece of equipment. Okay? So, isa example natin, yung sa bahay nyo, sa mga bahay, okay? From the post, uh, kung saan tayo kumukuha ng kuryente, kailko, no, meron tayong drop line pagpunta sa bahay. May breaker. Okay? From the source, may breaker. Tapos from the breaker sa bahay, tinidistribute ka na. May breaker tayo para sa ilaw. May breaker tayo para sa saksakan. No? May breaker tayo para sa mga um, ibang outlets. Okay? Ang purpose ng breaker noon, dati ang ginagamit natin is fuse. Okay, tanong mo sa mga nanay at tatay nyo, ang ginagamit pa nila noon, yung breaker with fuse, operated by fuse. Okay? Ang purpose noon, just in case na magkaroon ng short circuit, ang masisira ay yung fuse. Okay? Ngayon, ang ganda nung ano nila, na naimbento nila yung breaker. So once na ma-overload yung saksakan, magtitrip yung breaker para hindi siya mag-cause ng fire. Okay, so ganun na, ganun yung na ano nila. Okay, so most hospitality operations, however, buy electricity from a local utility for some facilities located in larger complex. And electricity may be provided by the building owner. Okay, so ito yung isang diagram. Panoorin nyo, eh, tingnan nyo yung diagram pa yan. Okay, sir, paano kung nasa bundok kami, wala kami electricity? Ano pwede namin kami? Napakadami. Pwede, ang electricity nyo is through... Uh, solar solar energy no solar panels maglalagay kayo meron naman yung gagawa ka ng hydro dam na maliit parang dam operated siya okay so para mas maintindihan nyo, here i have a video no kung saan nagagaling ating electricity so ganito siya so let's watch this
First step to get electricity in our home is to generate it. And the place where it is generated is called as generating station or power station. Power stations can be of different types like thermal power station, hydro power station, nuclear power station, solar power station, etc. Job of all of these power station is to generate huge amount of electricity. In thermal power station, electricity is generated by the heat produced by the combustion of coal, oil or natural gas. In hydro power plants, energy of moving water is converted into electrical energy by means of huge hydraulic turbines which is coupled with generators. In nuclear power station, electricity is generated from the heat released by nuclear reaction. In solar power station, electricity is generated by converting solar energy into electrical energy. Solar energy, wind energy, biomass and hydro, all these sources are known as green sources of electricity as they do not cause any pollution. These generating stations are located far away from the consumer as they should be located near the primary energy source like water, coal or etc. Also these generating stations requires huge amount of land. For example, Kurnool Ultra Mega Solar Power Plant is spread over a total area of 5932 acres. And because of these reasons such power stations has to be far away from ultimate end user. As the power stations are far away from the end user, electricity needs to be transmitted to a desired location. And which takes us to the phase 2 of the journey of electricity to our home which is transmission. Power stations generate electricity at lower voltage. But while transmitting electricity, the voltage is stepped up by using a step-up transformer as delivering power at higher voltage offers more advantages over smaller voltage. One of these advantages includes low losses while transmitting electricity and this saves huge amount of money. Once the voltage is stepped up, these conductors carries electricity to the next level with the help of these kind of giant towers. Job of these towers is to support the current carrying conductors and also to maintain a safe clearance between ground and conductors and also between the parallel conductors. You might have seen such kind of thing while traveling. This is called as substation. The function of substation is to either step up the voltage or step it down. It also helps in combining the power coming from two different generating stations which further increases the reliability of complete system. Substation consists of transformer which helps in stepping up or stepping down the voltage. It also has protective devices like circuit breaker to protect the system in case of fault. It also has measuring devices like voltage and current transformer which measures the voltage and current respectively. Substation plays a very important role in both the phases that is transmission and distribution. Power is transferred to a long distance in transmission phase but when it reaches to the destination voltage needs to be stepped down because power with this much high voltage cannot be delivered to the end customer. So this brings us to the last phase of journey of electricity to our home which is distribution. High voltage power coming from the transmission phase cannot be delivered directly to the end user. Voltage level must be lowered before delivering the power to the end consumer and this is done by a distribution substation. In distribution substation voltage is stepped down to much lower value. After this low voltage power is carried by the distribution lines to a distribution pole or DP in short. This distribution pole has a transformer which further lowers the voltage and this power is now carried by these lines which helps us to get the electricity in our home. So to summarize how we get electricity in our home, first step is to generate electricity using different power stations. Then 
this power is transferred to a long distance via transmission lines which is the second step then power is stepped down in a distribution phase which is the last step and this low voltage power is now ready to get into our home okay so nakita niya kung paano naging uh, paano yung sistema okay kanawan pag generate ng electricity so marami Okay, so let's proceed. Ganon din yan guys sa mga ano, sa mga hotels. Okay, syempre dahil mas malaki sila building, mas malaki yung uh, kailangan nilang consumption. So makikita nyo mismo sa may, meron silang parang substation din mismo. Maliit na substation mismo sa may kilit ng hotel nila. Kasi kailangan nila ng large amount of electricity, tapos from there pwede nilang distribute sa sa different departments of uh, the hotel. So, depende sa design yan. Okay? The utility service resources the building with electricity at a specific voltage and numbers of base, which is capacity to deliver a trace amount of current at a given frequency. The voltage of the system is measured to electrical potential provided by utility, often compared with water pressure in a water system. Okay, kung sa water, ang tawag natin sa pressure is water pressure. Okay, sa electricity, ang tawag natin is voltage. Okay? Frequency refers to the rate which is an alternating current. AC power supplies alternate the direction of the current flow. The number of phase refers to the number of energized or hot wires in electrical supply. The ampere's capability of service refers to the maximum current flow for the system. It essentially defined by the wire size feeding the building. Minsan, uh, observe nyo, pag pumunta kayo sa mga building, try nyo pag pumunta kayo sa, ano, no, sa may uh, city hall, hanapin nyo kung saan yung, sundan nyo kung nasa yung may part na malaking kuryet, anong kable ng kuryet, mataba kable ng kuryete. Makikita nyo doon sa may gilid nila. Meron silang parang maliit na substation din doon. Okay? Ah, hindi. Mal hindi pala. Sorry. Hindi maliit na substation. Maliit na transformer na kung saan kinoconvert nila yung uh, electricity nila lower down nila para i-distribute sa kanilang bahay. Ay, bahay. Sa kanilang mga offices and departments. Sorry. Black configurations throughout the world are variety of purpose uh, in an attempt to avoid the problem that can occur when equipment designed for one electrical system. Okay, so yan yung isang exhibit natin. Uh, ang common sa atin dyan, no, South America or Caribbean, Philippines, is the NW-3. Okay, sa Australia, nakita ko yan. Uh, NW-2. Europe is, uh, Europe and Western Middle East parts of uh, Africa. NW-1 and Africa, Great Britain, Ireland. Yan. Number 135. So, magkakaiba sila ng saksakan. So, pag may dumating na balik pa yan box sa bahay nyo, ganyan sa kamag-anak nyo, malalaman nyo kung saan nila binili. Eh, depende yan sa itsura ng configuration ng kanilang plugs. Okay? System design and operating standards. Okay, the electrical distribution system at the property should be designed and maintained according to relevant codes and standards. These codes and standards are established to provide safe and reliable sources of electrical power. Failure to follow the codes and standards can result in problems ranging from equipment failure to a major fire. The codes change over time as new information is discovered and new materials are developed. Okay, so sa bahay tayo, pag tayo gumagawa ng, di ba, pag nagtayo ng bahay, Uh, kung kumuha kayo ng building permit, no? chine-check din yan. May standard na sinusunod pag, sa paglagay ng mga electrical nyo. Okay? Same, ganun din sa, ano, sa hospitality o sa hotel. No? May sinusunod sila standard para, no? para ma-avoid din yung mga problems and uh, that may affect no? sa electrical distribution o mas problema na pwedeng maging cause uh, ng ang danger sa mga tao. Okay? 
system and equipment maintenance. Keep electrical equipment from breaking down is particularly important since this equipment is so important to availability, ability to occupy the building for effective electrical program, the following are needed. A current set of plans for building electrical system, good knowledge of electrical practice in building electrical system by maintenance personnel, good housekeeping practice in areas containing equipment, knowledge of adherence to proper safety procedures, uh, incorporation of electrical maintenance procedures into the facility preventive maintenance. So, gumagawa sila ng mga guidelines na para sundin Okay, especially uh, sa paggawa ng mga maintenance no, sa mga equipment. Ito so, napaka-importante yan. Para kahit sinong mag-handle, no, dito yan mo lang yung manual, ito yung guidelines na kailangan natin sundin. Hindi mo na kailangan i-educate lahat na employee mo, isa-isa, no, at least uh, doon sa manual, kaya gagawa ka ng guidelines para yun na mismo yung magiging standard nila para sundin kung ano yung dapat gawin. Okay? Okay, huwag tayo mag-proceed. No? May gusto kong panood sa inyo about electrical designs. So, ito yung ginagawa sa hotel guest room. Para may idea kayo. Let's watch this video. This one is a hotel guest room management system. So, ito, uh, ito yung ginagawa nila para mas madaling ma-monitor. Okay, so let's watch this.
Okay, so nakita nyo yung uh, system design nila sa hotel. Napaka, napaka high-tech. Okay. So, Siyempre, pag ganun ka high-tech, kailangan uh, mag ano ka, uh, yung pagdating sa electrical system, mas complicated. Okay. So let's proceed. Electrical plants. Okay, a number of building electrical system have terminals in the gas room of a large facility. Therefore, the electrical plants of gas room provides a good reference for viewing of a number of elements of the system. Electrical plan and interior design plan must be closely coordinated to ensure that electrical services are provided and take at key locations. Kaya nung pinakita ko sa inyo. Okay? Yan, dinidesign mo na yan. Kung aprobe yan, tsaka nila i-implement. Okay, a building's electrical plan will be quite extensive. A major challenge with regard to the, these plans is to keep them current as modifications are made to building. While updating plans is sometimes not tough, though of a maintenance activity it should be. Okay, so ito yung example, kagaya nung pinakita ko sa'yo kanina. No, ayan yung, yung living room, may sala. My bed, okay. My uh, comfort room, yeah. okay. So, ito may gusto pa kong ipanood sa inyo na isang design no, no, ng kanilang electrical system sa hotel room. Okay, so let's watch this. Ito naman, the grand control room system naman siya. So, nakita nyo yung design nila, no? Yung uh, front office na mismo yung nagko-control, no? Sa, sa lighting, no? kaya na nilang i-adjust yung inyong air conditioning kasi centrali uh, centralized naman yan. So, napakaganda, napaka-high-tech compared, uh, yun, ngayon, yun yung pinapa-implement nila. Unlike noon, no? Separate pa yung, ano, yung aircon. Kaya minsan, ginagawa ng iba, no, pag galit sila, uh, inoon lang ay pag ano, nababadrip sila o naano sila sa hotel, may mga taong maaksaya. So, yung online tubig, iniiwan nila. Meron namang iba, 
Noon lang yung air-condition, 24 hours. Binayaran ko naman yan, hindi yun. Para pagbalik ko, malamig yung room. So, ganun yung mga mentality nila. So, syempre, very costly pagdating sa mismong hotel. Pero, no, pati mga ilaw. Kaya nila imbento nila yung mga ganyan na advancement na monitoring system. Alam nila kung umalis ka, alam nila kung nakikita nila. Okay? Training in operating uh, and safety procedures. Maintenance staff and other key personnel should receive training in those aspects of the building's electrical system that are pertinent to their jobs. Their performance evaluation should be based in part of their knowledge and understanding of the system. Maintenance staff should be given a set of questions relates to the building electrical system. These questions should be a part of the training program. The questions can also be used to test employees being considered of retention for retention or promotion. Competence can be further verified by asking an applicant to demonstrate basic skills such as wiring secret or testing a circuit for problems. Siyempre, hindi kasi sapat lang sabihin mo na, okay, I'm an engine, electrical engineer, graduate ako uh, with a license. So, kailangan, uh, ina-update mo din yung learning skills mo. Okay? Kasi ang hirap naman kung hanggang doon ka lang, CPA, ay CPA, uh, board passer ka ng ano engineer ka electrical engineer pero hindi ka naman hindi ka gumagawa ng way para ma-improve yung skills and knowledge mo no? kakalawangin ka but at the same time may mga advancement o technology na ginagamit sa mga hotel o so kanilang pag develop o, para mas during renovation nag-i-improve sila develop sila okay all stuff should be made aware of importance of reporting with electrical repairs and not operating equipment as have has become unsafe due to electrical problems. Staff cost electrical maintenance need can be reduced if the staff observe good operating practice. Okay, so alam nyo naman sa atin, sa hospitality, kung po-promote ka, kung nakita na lang may potential ka, pero kung tatamad-tamad ka, eh, don't expect a promotion. Ano nyo? Keep equipment that is electricity clean. Okay? Avoid uh, storage of this equipment in tap or wet location. Use a firm grip on a plug when plugging, when unplugging equipment rather than pu pulling on the electrical cord. Okay? In, ito, lagi natin ginagawa ito pag tinatamad tayo mga electrical, mga fa, electric, electrical, ano nyo, electric fan, mga charger. Hindi nyo hinahawakan mismo yung matigas na part na kung saan natin sinasaksak. Ang inihila natin yung cord mismo. Match the equipment to task. Overloading with equipment may result into motor failure or other problems. Okay? Kaya nga, di ba sa mga following, sa mga previous discussion natin, mayroon tayong mga preventive maintenance na ginagawa sa mga equipment no? para ma-avoid yung uh, overuse. Okay? Prompt report on function electrical equipment so that they need repairs. Do not perform do it yourself repair or modify the electrical system and equipment. Remember, specialist equipment, ba? Sabi natin, pumukha tayo ng mga subcontractors kasi sila yung mismong may mga staff na mas uh, training na ginagawa doon sa specified product nila. Do not use electrical rooms for short uh, storage of items that blocks access to electrical panels. Reduce air circulation to trans transformer rooms or otherwise create potential safety problems or contribute to pre premature equipment failure. Okay, kaya yan, ginagawa nila. Talagang nagbibigay sila na storage room. Hindi yung mismong room designed for uh, electrical room, gagawin mo pa siyang storage. So, hindi pa pwede yun. Kasi pwede maging cost ng problem mismo sa, sa operation. When electrical maintenance is performed, safety concerns are very important. Okay? Knockout tag or out procedures should always be followed when work is performed on electrical equipment. This involves locking out of services those circuits to be worked on so that another individual cannot accidentally energize the circuit or someone, someone is working on them. Alam nyo, Pag humahawa kasi sila ng electrical uh, wiring, napaka-importante na pinapatay yung breaker. 
kung saan yung part na naayos nila. Okay? Ngayon, pag hindi mo nilagyan ng tag, okay na, sabihin mo na, don't, uh, don't open. Uh, ano dito? Ongoing uh, maintenance in room 201. Okay? Yun usually yung mga tag na nilalagay. Pero pag nakalimutan mo ng tag at may dumaan dyan, at sasabihin ng isang katrabaho, oh, ba't nakasarado to? Lahat to dapat nakaot. Eh, nag, okay, hinahawa ka mo electrical. Yung wiring mismo, tapos bilang inon. Eh, may electrocute ka. Okay, so napaka-importante na may ini-inform ka. At the same time, tinatag mo din yung uh, mga breaker na kailangan nakapatay during uh, the, the repair na ginagawa mo. Okay? Electrical safety can often be an issue even non-electrical maintenance because electrical services are needed for so many uses. <clears throat> electrical wiring can be found almost anywhere. Care must be taken when performing other maintenance tasks to avoid accidental contact with electrical lines. The following are some keys to safe tips. When performing on-site excavations, refer to the site map for the location of any buried electrical cables. Okay? Pag mamaya, naguhukay ka. Pag huhukay mo, tama mo yung cable na nakabaon, makukuryente ka. Avoid electrical service location when painting eaves and draining roofs or doing other work on roof other side of the building. Okay? Kasi alam nyo ang kuryente pag may expose yan na wire. No? Minsan, sobrang lakas ng current na pwede ka nilang higupin. No? Parang ano, magnet, pamagnetin ka na. Tapos pag tumikit ka, oh, matay ka na. Avoid down electrical wires. Keep people away from this and call electrical company immediately. No? Hindi ko alam kung may mga nakikita kayo biglang uh, nag-i-spark, nagputol, sobrang init. Tapos, maghahang na siya. So, pag may mga tao naglakad na hindi aware, mong pwedeng dumikit, pwede silang makuryente. Avoid any tree or limb touching electrical wires. If a tree or limb falls over the wires, do not attempt to remove it. Call the electrical company. Kaya alam nyo ang ginagawa ng mga uh, ka-elco tsaka Meralco, mga electrical companies. No? Uh, hindi na nila inaantay na may nalalaglag na puno o sanga na natutumbag na puno o sa nga na nalalaglag doon sa electrical wire bago nila ano, ayusin. So, preventive maintenance. Okay? Pinuputol. Kaya nakita nyo, nagpuputol lang kay Elko ng puno. Puputol sila ng sanga. Nagtitrim sila. Doon sa mga part na kung saan may possible cause na pag bumagyo, lumakas ang hangin, umulan, eh, pwedeng maka-apekto doon sa electrical lines. Sino bang maapektuhan? Di ba tayo din naman kasi tayo din yung end user, tayo din yung gumagamit ng electrical, ng electricity. Wear safety glasses and rubber shoe, uh, sold and healed safety shoes when working. Nakakatulong ito. Okay? Napaka-importante. System components, we have already looked briefly, transformer, feeders, and other system. Okay? Sa bahay, we have fuse and circuit breakers. Okay, napaka-importante yan para kung nagkaroon ng short circuit, ang circuit breakers mismo yung mag-treat down. No? Pwede mo lang siyang i-on. Hindi kagaya dati na pag ang fuse uh, nasira na, replaceable, kailangan mo siyang palitan. Okay, panels and wirings. Next to fuse and boxes are panels and wirings that dissipate electricity to the building and its equipment. Okay, when it comes to panels and wirings, guys, no, may sinusunod tayo yan. Okay, uh, pag kunwari, ang gagawin mo, maglalata ka ng, mag-layout ka ng, uh, ng wiring para sa outlet, may ginagamit silang number of wires. Okay, pag sinabing number, may code yan, yung kapal ng wire sa loob. Kasi hindi pwedeng yung wire na ginagamit mo para sa ilaw ay parehas dun sa wire na ginagamit mo para sa outlet. Magkakaiba yan. Kasi yung loading capacity. Okay, kasi ang mga breaker natin, may mga amperes yan. 15, 10, 20 amperes, 50 amperes, depende kung saan siya gagamitin. Okay, dahil ang ilaw, napaka-less lang na ginagamit ng electricity, 
oh, mahinang amperes lang ang ginagamit. Mas mani, mas medyo mas manipis na wire ang ginagamit compared doon sa mga outlets and plugs. Check tightness of all wiring connection to ensure adequate electricity contact. Okay kasi pag maano pag ma, maluwag hindi maganda yung flow ng electricity. Measure the current flow in electrical circuit to be sure it is within capable limits. Okay, may standard tank sunod. Measure supply voltage to electrical equipment to sure, uh, sure power, proper voltage level exists. Okay? Di ba, meron tayong mga ano, uh, hindi ko alam kung sa bahay nyo. Karamihan sa bahay nyo, puro 220. No? Pero may mga old houses, especially pag yan ay natirahan ng may bahay kayo na binili nyo sa ang dati may ari is uh, uh, American or a foreigner. Uh, ang minsan, meron silang mga outlet na 110. And check the operating temperatures of wires, motors, and other elements of electrical system. This should be within the rate, rate limits of the equipment. Okay? Yan ginagawa natin yan sa preventive maintenance. Check the temperature rise in wires, terminal blocks, and motors. Check the flow of electrical in three-phase circuits and supplies to ensure that the load on the three-phase is approximately balanced. Okay? Minsan mararamdaman mo yan na kung makikita nyo yung kung may napanood kayo mga news about yung mga nasusunog na bahay sa Manila, ano bang giging cause? Sinasabi nilang mga firefighter, ah, overload yan. Okay? Kasi yung saksakan, yung outlet, manipis na yung wire na ginamit doon. Tapos sa saksaka, nagsaksak pa sila ng extension. Sa extension, may isang pupang nakasaksak. Okay? So, na-overload siya na hindi naman dapat. So, umiinit siya. Okay? Yun yung possible na maging cost ng fire. Electric motors controls drives an element. Electric motors are found in many devices in hospitality operation. Example, air conditioning, vacuum cleaners, dishwasher, and laundry. In addition, large motors power major piece of building equipment such as the compressor and chillers, air handling fans, and chilled water pumps. Okay? So, yan, napaka-importante. Electric motors that are integral parts of the equipment such as motors and gas room, air conditioning equipment, and dishwasher will be included in overall preventive maintenance instruction for, for the equipment. Yeah. So, ginagawa natin yan. Electronic equipment. Electronic equipment is especially sensitive to such power quality problems as voltage transient, momentarily voltage sags and surges, momentarily power loss, electrical noise, and harmonic distortion. Okay? So, ano pwedeng gawin? Wiring inten intensi intensive solutions such as wiring upgrades, ground bonding upgrades, and isolation of equipment loads. Kung alam nyo naman sa... Uh, Uh, hotel facility nyo na itong equipment na ito ay nagpuputus ng maingay. Huwag nyo nang ilalapit. Siyempre, di ba? Gagawa ka ng isolate, ilalayo. Ilalayo mo siya para at the same time, wala siyang, hindi siya nakaka-apekto, nakakapag-produce ng noise pollution doon mo sa mismong facility mo. Equipment intensive solutions such as surge suppression equipment, voltage regulators, isolation transformer, and battery backup units. Okay. Okay, next is emergency power system. Oh, to cut short, emergency power system, pag nawalan ka ng kuryente, oh, magkaroon ng problema, no? ano yung mga backup, pwede mong ano, pagkuhanan. Okay? So here, please watch this video regarding sa emergency. Sa atin, pag brown out, anong ginagawa? Generator. There are really two major categories of widely used standby power systems, generators and UPS. I'm only addressing generators in this course. So, what's a generator? The generators in this course are a type of rotating machine, which, by design, generate electricity when rotated at a certain speed by some type of motor or engine. The generator portion of this system is generally a very robust, reliable device which, when operating, puts out up to a specified amount of current at a voltage consistent with the voltage of the system it is feeding. Today, the electronic regulating devices built into most generators 
allow it to put out electricity in a form which is indistinguishable from the normal utility supplied power. Having this power conditioning included in the generator is especially important when feeding sensitive electronics and most small motors during a utility outage. Most generators are rotated or spun by internal combustion engines. These engines can be designed to use one, sometimes two, also known as dual fuel, of several different types of fuels, such as gasoline, diesel fuel, natural gas, or propane. However, the most common generator fuel is diesel fuel. This is because diesel fuel is readily available, easily stored, and not easily ignited. The internal combustion engines used in generators are very similar to the engines used in your car or truck, with just a couple of modifications. Those modifications allow the generator engine to start up very quickly and to run at a fixed speed for many hours or days without undue wear and tear on the engine. Like most internal combustion engines, Generator engines are normally started by using a lead-acid storage battery. Almost all generator engines are designed to use what is known as block heaters, which must be connected and kept operational all the time, especially when the generator is in a standby mode, not running. Block heaters are powered by normal line power. If the block heater doesn't run all the time, there is a good possibility, particularly in colder climates, that the engine lifespan would be shortened considerably, as it must come up to full RPMs as soon as it is started. Your typical automobile engine wouldn't last long if, when started cold, it was revved up to a high RPM right away, and this procedure was repeated every few days. To prolong the engine life in a generator, the block heater is used to keep the engine cool and warm, but even more important, this keeps the engine lubricating oil at a free-flowing temperature, allowing it to circulate properly as soon as the engine is started, thereby facilitating quicker starting of the engine and maximizing engine life. Okay, so nakita nyo. <coughs> ano on. Ang nangyari pagdating sa generators. Hindi ko alam kung kayo sa bahay niya, may mga generator kayo, okay? So makikita nyo, pag burn out, ang backup natin, emergency power system is generator. Usually, ang generator, guys, malayo sa site, uh, malayo sa inyong uh, establishment kasi talagang nagpo-produce ito ng ingay. Okay? So, meron din tayo mga preventive maintenance na ginagawa for our generators, okay? Check like checking fluid levels on battery system, checking the charge level in batteries, checking proper ventilation for battery battery rooms, cleaning and lubricating battery terminals to retard corrosion, testing engine and generator system under load, observing and recording appropriate data regarding each engine generator test. So in the standard ginagawa. We have electrical maintenance equipment. Okay, yan yung mga for the engineering department, yan yung mga dinadala nila. Multimeter, a device capable of measuring volts. Water receptacle analyzer used to determine the condition of wall outlets. Fuse puller for cartridge fuse. This device allows safe removal of cartridge fuse. Di kinakamay. Talagang may design na uh, tools to, to do their uh, purposes. Rubber boots, gloves, and insulated ladders. Okay, kasi siyempre ang hinahawakan mo, kurete, electric, electricity. So anong protection mo is rubber gloves at rubber boots. Hydrometer, a device that measures specific gravity and is used to check change level in batteries. Electrical utility billing and building operation. The electrical bill represents the bulk of property energy cost. The utility usually sends a meter reader to record the energy and demand values of the property meter. A well return operation will take its own meter readings usually once per day and sometimes once per shift. The purpose of taking these readings is to diagnose any problems before they become severe. Okay? Preventive ulit natin. Okay, so there are two types of uh, electrical meters. Yeah. We have your kilowatt hour meter. Okay, yung 
Yan, makikita nyo yan sa bahay nyo. Okay? O, oh, kilowatt hour meter with kilowatt demand meter. Okay, demand. Maximum demand. The pointer in example. Okay. 11, exhibit 11. Demand tiles, exhibit 11. Cumulative demand register. A demand register like the shown in sample C. Recording demand meters with the advent of time of day rates. Okay. Now, uh, sa atin, isa lang ang ginagamit na natin na meter. Okay? Yung standard meter na ginagamit nyo sa bahay, yun yung standard meter. Pero ngayon, mas pinadali na nila. No? Meron nang mga lumalabas na digital uh, meter. Okay? So, mas madali magbilang kasi hindi mo na kailangan uh, ikaw mismo mag-manually compute. Yun, parang may bluetooth na po. Kaya yung mga nangungulikta ng ano, sa, sa Meralco, okay? NCR or Calabar Zone, pag nangungulikta sila. No, yung mga Meralco Biller. Lalapit lang sila sa ano, lalapit lang sila sa Metro. So check na, may, may hawak lang sila. Nakikita na nila kaagad kung ano yung bill mo. Okay? So, para mas matuto kayo kung paano mag basa ng inyong Metro, here is a video. Uh, on the basic on how to read your uh, electrical meter. So let's watch this. Reading your electricity meter is a useful way of keeping track of your power use. Mechanical meters are read manually once a quarter by professional meter readers. You'll notice on your electricity bill that energy usage is measured in kilowatt hours. So how much is a kilowatt hour? Well, if a 100 watt light globe was switched on for 10 hours, it would use one kilowatt hour of energy. The dials on the meter move in a clockwise and anti-clockwise direction. To determine the direction of the dial, check which side of zero the one is on. Each of the numbers on the dial represent the kilowatt hours you use. To read your meter, start with the dial that's furthest on the right. In this case, it's an 8. If the hand on the dial is between two numbers, write down the number that the hand has just passed. Do the same for each of these dials, moving from right to left. For this meter, the numbers are 0, 0, 1, 9, 9. And this is the kilowatt hours. If you want to know more about electricity meters, visit our website. Okay, so ganun lang. Napaka simple lang, no? Magbasa ng inyong metro. So, try nyo. Diyan sa bahay nyo, basahin nyo para makita nyo kung tama ba yung nasa billing nyo. Okay? So next is we have your activities. Okay? Go to your Google Classroom and watch the video tutorial on how to read electrical meter and how to compute for the current bill charges. After watching the tutorial, secure your previous home electric bill and read your current electric meter. Follow the procedures in computing your electrical electricity consumption. Attach a picture of electric bill and current electric meter you computed, okay? Send. Kung hindi makapunta, you can send it to the group chat, okay? Activity 2, research on the internet how to check for billing errors presented. The step-by-step -step procedure, okay? So, yun yun. Okay? Uh, isulat nyo sa yellow paper, okay? Write your name, uh, your subject, the week, and the date kung kailan nyo siya submit. Okay? Hindi yung kung kailan nyo ginawa, kung kailan nyo isasubmit. Okay? So, thank you for watching guys. Have a good day and God bless.